Don't mind, mind it out. Don't mind me on the numbers. I'll figure it out. I should just stop saying the numbers in case I gotta move them around. There you go. Alright, next episode as promised for Hogs Daily Brief. Helicopter rental after training. This came from a member since we started this series seven, eight, nine days, nine days ago. And they said, hey, could you do a video on renting a helicopter after training? I mean, after you're getting your license, license and they put parentheses in their, in their um, comment, very discouraging. I'm pretty sure I know what that means. A lot of times flight schools will do the dual training with you. They'll let you solo the helicopter for the time that you need. They'll help you do the dual training, finish up your license, and you're a brand new private pilot. And then guess what? They won't rent the helicopter to you. The reason I think that is done is because some guys get a break on their insurance policy if they tell the insurance company, hey, we're just gonna do training, we're gonna let them solo, but we're not gonna do a rental. Because once you're renting, you're still kind of under the supervision of the flight school, but you're then a rated pilot. You can make the decisions on when you're gonna fly, where you're gonna go, what you're gonna do. So companies, one, they may not wanna pay the extra insurance to allow you to solo. Two, they don't want the liability of what you're gonna do with their aircraft once you become a rated pilot and you go out and start flying. So that's my gut instinct on, you know, why this person said very discouraging, I get it. When I owned an aircraft, I had the full-blown policy, I could do whatever I wanted, and we soloed people, because I didn't think it was fair to train someone, get them all the way through the rating, and go, oh, but sorry, we're not gonna rent your air our aircraft to you. What do you think about the rental idea? You know, honestly, I haven't looked into many of the flight schools, but I believe, um, I would think that the bigger ones would allow you to do that. Sure. But I, but I do know when I first started off. I mean, we. I think Kenny's told the story before. I didn't start with Kenny. Kenny became my primary. But I started with another. I should say company, but it was only technically one guy and one right. one aircraft. I started with that person, and he was. He was. Uh, hang on. Let me get rid of this static. Two hundred. He was straight up with me. He told me from day one that he wasn't going to rent the aircraft, and I thought, well, after my, you know, after I got my my rating, I said, well, oh, that's several hours later. I mean, I'll think about that later. Um, but it was a concern to me because I obviously wanted to rent and fly on my own and take friends and family and build yep. time for commercial and that kind of stuff. Um, so you know, I was a little shocked by that because I think it's kind of expected for airplanes that you can right. rent a 172 after you you know do your training or whatever sure uh, but yeah so i would say you know they need to be up front with you from the get go you know they need to they, they you shouldn't be surprised at the end of your training that you come there and rent and they go oh, we don't do that they should be up front with you on that and i think i I'm, i agree with you i think it all comes down to the insurance and you know you can you know you'll find that we're going to talk more about it later that you know, once you start putting instruction on your policy and then you, and or renting to a 50 hour pilot, the insurance just skyrockets. Yes. So I think a lot of that is, is the liability and the insurance reasons why they don't uh, do that. Exactly, so, exactly right. A private owner will say, hey, I got this helicopter. You, you want to use it for training? Yeah, sure. We've still got a lease agreement. And then that blows their minds when they check with their insurance company and to do training, their their skyrockets. So the insurance is a big one. I have an older video that I'll put down below where we go in detail on it. But, you know, the second question was from a person wanting to buy a helicopter. And I want to know all about R22 ownership and insurance. Do your research because as we're telling you, every single insurance company has different policies. We're going to cover another video later on solo and insurance. It just, every single situation is different on the pilot, on the aircraft, on the company. And there's a, many insurers out there and you'll be surprised at how the differences are sometimes between insurance companies. So what's an R22 going to cost you? I don't know. My insurance for my instrument, the first insurance company I had was $18,000 a year. Holy cow. And then I got a better deal later down the road for ten grand a year. And the one at 18000 was super restrictive. And we want to tell this story. Hauser did his private commercial CFI with me. He 
got his instructor rating. I want to put him on the insurance. And the insurance company said, well, have him go get 350 hours and make a model, and we'll put him on your policy. And I blew up. I lost my mind. I went, I'm paying you $18,000 a year. I'm listed on for your company as a check pilot. And someone that I trained. And you, you, are you kidding me? I freaking blew up. I lost my mind. Thank God, another operator said, Kenny, call this guy. To this day, we're better, this great friends. This insurance man said, he gave me a policy for 10, 10 grand a year. He was like, Kenny, you can hire whoever you want. Just send us their info. Want to put Chris on, whoever. Send us their pilot info and, you, and, you're, and you're ready to go. As the underwriter, we're not going to tell you, you got to have 350 hours for the guy that you just trained. That's just ridiculous. So the number of scenarios you can run into with insurance, that's why you have to check into it for your specific um, your situation. And you brought up something. Um, Renter's insurance? No, Renter's insurance, yes. yes. So for Sweet Aviation, we require our students to have renter's insurance. And it is, and the helicopter insurance is, it's gonna cost you, I, I, I haven't checked into it because obviously I work for the company, so I'm insured there. But I believe it's gonna, it's right around 1,000 to 1,100 a year to get helicopters, renters insurance. So that means for us, before you solo our aircraft and before you solo the G2, you have to have helicopters, renters insurance. And I think it's going to cost like a, a eleven hundred a year. So, because I know it's it's roughly almost a hundred bucks a month. Sure. That you have to pay. So, I'm glad you brought that up. I've never had to get it. The schools I trained at, they didn't require it. I didn't require it, and I made sure with my insurance company, like I don't have to have. They don't have to have renters insurance, right? No, absolutely not. But that situation could be different anywhere you go. So again, do your research, and that's something you want to post to a flight school when you start. Yep. Am I going to need rent? Can I so can I rent? And are you going to insure me after? Another part of doing your research. All right, we better roll on, uh, get rolling on the next one. So, yeah. hey, helicopter maneuver guide down below. It's free. You can download it. It's got all the maneuvers as per the helicopter flying handbook. It's a cool download down below. Subscribe to the channel. Click the bell, and we'll see you tomorrow for helicopter helmets. The member question: What's the deal with helmets? Should I wear a helmet? Tomorrow. Peace out. These are turning lengthy. Yeah, they are. We, we are but, it's, but it's good stuff. It you is know, good it, stuff. It's, it's These are great. Uh, I'm feeling good.